Tell us about your background. Um, I went to quite a good grammar school. Uh, my uh, father and mother were honest law-abiding citizens, but I went to prison at 18 for six years for manslaughter, and then when I was 24, I went to prison for life and served 24 years for murder. What are the characteristics you and Frank have had to have to survive inside prison? For that length of time, if you're talking about 15, 20 years, phenomenal strength, phenomenal determination, tenacity. And um, what were the conditions like, especially in Parkhurst? Incredibly brutal, especially through the 70s and the 80s. I mean, one of the reasons I wrote Parkhurst Towers was to advise the public, look, do you realise this is being done in your name? And because the prison officers use brutality, intimidation, violence, against the prisoners, the only way you can register any sort of protest is to respond in kind. That's the only thing they seem to, un to understand. Frank hated prison officers and saying he suffered many beatings. Are they as bad as he makes out? At certain times in certain prisons, yes. I mean, I'd like to believe the average prison officer who goes in a job is probably well-meaning, but perhaps the system brutalises them as much as it does us. Also, they're certainly not supervised enough, so the few bad prison officers are allowed to flourish and get away with things that would put us in prison. And, and do you sympathise with Frank when he afterwards firebombed prison officers' homes? I can understand it, I can't really sympathise with it because the point is any wives and the children of the prison officers there, they aren't guilty of whatever they've done to Frank. I mean, my own way would probably be to single the prison officers out when they're on their own, rather than in the arms of their families. Um, Frank received the, the cat and the birch uh, when he was in prison. How barbaric were these punishments? Well, I went into prison, I suppose, first in 1963, at 18 years of age, and I think it was just, just finished. I think it had just been done away with. And I'd met a couple of people who'd had it, and I could see the scars on their back. And yeah, incredibly brutal, incredibly barbaric. And it didn't seem to change the people from the better, it just made them worse and more vicious. Do the prisoners in jail deserve to suffer as they do? I think the suffering isn't the fact that you're denied your freedom. If you're saying, are they to be denied the rule of law, are prison officers allowed to commit grievous bodily harm, attempted murder and murder against us? No, they're not. Now, Frank used buckets of shit and piss as offensive weapons in prison. Was this commonplace? Yes, it was. I mean, a lot of people might, okay, a bit of a cliche, look down their nose at something like that. But when you're naked in a strip cell and a prison officer is going to come in and beat you up, if the only thing that's going to deter them is that you've covered yourself with your own piss and shit, well then that's the route you're going to go, just to save yourself a beating. Uh, when you were in Parkhurst, the, the Crays were there, but what are your memories of them? They were in a separate wing to me, they were first of all in a security wing and then they put them in a special psychiatric wing. Um, Reggie was always quite articulate and quite well balanced, but Ronnie, poor soul, was always very much a troubled spirit. And uh, Frank worked with the Richardsons, and, and you were inside with Eddie Richardson. What was he like? Yeah, he was a nice enough guy, Eddie. I mean, unfortunately, I think like quite a few of us, he was very much into the gangster image. And he came out and he walked into another very big sentence, and he's in prison today. Frank left prison after 20 years and said he forgot all about it the next day. Um, is that possible? It might be possible for Frank Fraser, but it certainly wasn't possible for me. And I don't think it's possible for anybody else, because you carry your experience with you. And I don't think it's possible to completely ignore some of the extreme things that happen to you in prison after just one day. Uh, Frank has killed people, but doesn't seem to show any remorse either. Do you think that is just a show, or doesn't he really care? On the basis of meeting Frank once in the Clerkenwell Literary Society, I can't really say. People deal with it in their own way. From my own particular point of view, it isn't that you don't care. It's that after 24 or 28 years, in my case, of suffering in prison, 
you're not really to come out willing to come out and wear sackcloth and acids, you know? Internally, you're sorry for what you've done, but you're not going to make a big show of remorse just to satisfy the people. And do you admire Frankie Fraser? I admire his courage, his tenacity, what he did in prison in an incredibly brutal regime. I mean, Frank Fraser is the world champion of pain and suffering. What I do criticise Frank for, and I criticise myself for it, is bad judgment. We made decisions that made us spend 20 or more years in prison. And I'd hate any young man to think that what Frank or I did was clever and to follow us along that path. And, and is that the advice that you would give to young criminals that embark on a life of crime? Is it worth it? It's up to the individual. I mean, people sacrifice themselves on various altars. But for God's sake, find out exactly what it is you're signing up for. I'm sure Frank, in his quieter moments, would turn around and say that he's wasted a great part of his life. I would certainly say that. I wasted 28 years, and in many ways it was for nothing, because sometimes it isn't that, more, isn't that difficult to walk the other way.